I saw this awesome railroad crossing sign on Pinterest, and then I saw the price. $1,200. No, honey, we're going to make this for less than $5. Let's get started. First, you want to grab a large foam board from Dollar Tree. I'm just using the width of the foam board, so it is going to be approximately 20 inches in length, and then I am measuring it to six inches in width. So I just grabbed something sturdy and straight to create a straight line. And again, now you're gonna have two pieces of six by 20 inch foam board. I am just using a sharp box cutter to cut apart the foam. I then cut one of them in half, but that actually didn't work the way that I thought it was going to work. So in reality, those half pieces actually ended up only being seven and a half inches. So first I'm grabbing some of this Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. I wanted this to have an off-white color. I'm just using a cut up sponge and I'm just dabbing that chalk paint all throughout the foam board and then just allow that to completely dry. In the original sign, it did have some of this very light brown background so i'm using some of this anita's acrylic paint in the color latte and again i'm using that cut up sponge just to dab that all throughout the foam board and then again allow that to completely dry i then downloaded a font it's called mandatory on dafont.com and i just printed it out using my printer and I just spelled out railroad crossing. So I am using a pencil and I am just putting this all throughout the back side of the printout because what I'm going to be doing is transferring this lettering onto the foam board. This is another thing that you could do if you don't have a Cricut machine. So once I have the pencil marking all on the back of the printout, I'm just placing it onto the foam board, taping it down so it does not move around on me. And then with a pen, I'm just going over the letters that are printed out and I'm kind of doing it with a little bit of pressure, but not enough for the pen to go through the paper. And every now and then I just checked to make sure that the lettering was transferring onto the foam board, which it was. So just continue doing this until everything is complete and you could see the outline of all the letters. Here's a close up, kind of hard to see, but it is there if you do this in person. Next, I'm using this oil based Sharpie to fill in all of the lettering. Now, you don't have to use this kind of Sharpie, you could just use some black paint with a small paintbrush and fill in the letters that way. But once everything was complete, you want to allow it to completely dry. And once that was complete, let's go ahead and assemble this together. So I just flipped the foam board upside down. Make sure that the words are where they need to be and they are not backwards. And then I'm just using a jumbo craft stick or popsicle stick, just applying some hot glue on the back of them and then just holding it down into place until that hot glue hardens. Next, I got these thumbtacks from Dollar Tree. An easy way to paint them, I'm just putting them inside of some excess foam board so that way they're not moving around on me. Then I'm using this Waverly chalk paint in the color ink and just going over that with a paintbrush. So now I'm just gonna show you how to create that rusty finish look. So I am using a box cutter to go around some of the edges of the foam board and I'm actually just ripping some of that top layer of the foam board. So when I go in with my paint technique, it's almost going to look like the rust has eaten away at some of the paints. So first I'm starting to fill up those rips with Waverly chalk paint in the color ink. 
I don't allow this to completely dry, but then you want to start adding in some brown and orange acrylic paint or chalk paint, it doesn't matter. So for this technique, blending is absolutely key. You wanna keep adding some more of that brown and then add a little bit more orange until you get the look that you want. So once that was completely dry, I then just started adding the thumbtacks to the corners of the sign. And FYI, I did use a total of 14 thumbtacks. And there you go, guys. Look at how awesome this came out. Not bad for spending less than $5 on everything. Beats spending $1,200 on this sign. But thank you guys so, so much. I hope this inspires you to create your own. If it did, please be sure to sprinkle the love. Thank you so, so much. And I hope you all have a good rest of your day. Bye.